welcome students our next lecture on the solution of some gate questions on this uh, specifically the drop spillway. So, in this lecture we will discuss about uh, some of the typical gate type of questions um, on the design of drop spillway. Now, if you look to look to problem number 1 on the slide. Uh, the question is that the design discharge of a drop spillway is 7 cumic. If the length of the rectangle wire is 4.2 meter, what is the height of the end seal? So, from here you can see uh, uh, discharge Q is given 7 cumic. The length of the wire is given as 4.2 that is equal to L and you know that the height of end seal that is S equal to DC by 2. So, DC means that is the critical depth to compute critical depth we have to use the formula q square divided by g l square whole to the power 1 by 3. So, by putting these values uh, we will get d c equal to 0.657 because q equal to 7 and uh, g equal to 9.81 and l is equal to 4.2. So, we will get 0.657 as the critical flow depth. So, once the critical flow depth is known the end seal height can be estimated as d c by 2. So, that is equal to 0 0.657 2. So, you will get approximately uh, 0.329 meter. Okay. So, this is a typical question on, uh, on the design of end seal if you will know the uh, design discharge. Okay. Now, coming to the second problem, uh, you have already solved similar type of problems. So, the question is that a gully section having a drop of 2.5 meter receives runoff from a 100 hectare upstream area having the runoff coefficient of 0.36. So, here the gully section is having a drop, drop means that is your f, f equal to 2.5 meter as shown in this figure. So, your f equal to 2.5 meter and your catchment area is equal to 100 hectare because it is the area which is contributing runoff to the gully section and the runoff coefficient of this catchment is 0 0.36. So, k is equal to 0 0.36. Uh, the design storm for this area is 12 centimeter per hour. So, that means I the rainfall intensity is 12 centimeter per hour which is occurring mostly for a duration of equal to the time of concentration of this catchment. Okay. So, once I is known, the runoff coefficient k is known, area is known. So, you can use the, um, the rational formula to compute what is your peak runoff that is your design peak runoff. So, that equal to q equal to c i a or k i a. Okay. So, then the question is that if the practical length of the wire section of the draw spillway to be constructed at this gully section is 5 meter. So, that means, L should be 5 meter, the length of the wire should be 5 meter. So, once L is known, the question is that what should be the height of the head wall? The height of head wall can be given as F plus S. So, you can see this height in the figure. So, the drop plus the height of the end seal S. So, in this case the value of drop is given as 2.5 meter. So, we need to we have to compute the what is the height of end seal that is equal to S. So, you have already estimated what is the height of S in the previous question. So, in the similar way you can estimate the height of end seal that is S equal to d c by 2 or critical depth of flow divided by 2. So, for this the first uh, um, step is to compute what is your design q value. Okay. Now, we will estimate the design q value by using the rational formula. You can see here the given value of drop is 2.5 meter, wire length is 5 meter, area of catchment is 100 hectare, design intensity of rainfall is 12 centimeter per hour and runoff coefficient of the catchment is 0.36. The height of the end seal, uh, height of the head wall is given by f plus s. So, s equal to d c by 2. So, we will get f plus d c by 2. So, in this formula, first you have to compute what is the value of d c. 
to compute the value of dc you need the value of q the design discharge and the length of wear okay so q can be estimated by using the rational formula which is nothing but q equal to kia so k equal to 0 0.36 i is equal to 10 centimeter per hour and sorry here i equal to 10 centimeter per hour and a equal to 100 hectare okay so we'll get 0.36 into this is 10 into 10 to minus 2 into 3600. So, it is the unit conversion from because uh, uh, this is in centimeter 10 centimeter per hour. So, from centimeter per hour to meter per second. So, for that you have to multiply the 10 to the minus 2 divided by 3600 into 100 hectare. 100 hectare is your catchment area. So, into 10 to the 4 meter square is the area. So, that is the conversion factor you are using. So, you will get 12 cumic. So, from this you will get 12 cumic your design discharge. You will put this value of 12 cumic here L equal to 5 then you will get D c equal to 0.8373 meter. So, that is nearly equal to 0.84 meter. So, height of the head wall will be equal to A plus D c by 2 that is F plus S. So, we will get 2.5 is F and D c is 0.84. So, this dc by 2 will be this is a mistake here dc by 2 will be equal to 0 0.24. So, this value is wrong. So, we will get 2.5 plus 0 0.42. Okay. So, you will get equal to 2.42. Nine two meter. Okay, so the height of head wall will be equal to two point nine two meter. Okay. Then we'll get another type of problem in problem number three. In a drop spillway, the height of the flowing water above the crest is 0 0.75 meter. If the angle of internal friction of the backfill metal is 35 degree what is the horizontal pressure exerted on the head wall due to this water pressure. So, what is given here? The height of the flowing water. So, the value of h is given as 0.75 meter okay? and the angle of internal friction of the backfill metal is 35 degree. So, phi is given as 35 degree. Okay? Then what is the horizontal pressure exerted on the head wall due to this water pressure. Generally, whatever the water level is there, it exerts a vertical pressure. Okay. So, it exerts vertical pressure on this backfill material and this water pressure will be converted as uh, converted into the horizontal water pressure if you multiply with the K b value. We have already studied what is the value of K b. So, that is the ratio between the horizontal to vertical water pressures or uh, horizontal vertical pressure. So, that is equal to given by 1 minus sin phi divided by 1 plus sin phi. So, whatever vertical pressure you will be getting from this water, so that will get transmitted to this backfill and that is the vertical pressure then you have to convert into the horizontal pressure. Okay. So, with this concept now we will solve the problem. The vertical pressure due to water you know that P equal to gamma w into H, gamma w is the specific weight of water. So, that equal to 1000 kg per meter cube and H is equal to given that equal to 0.75 meter. Okay. So, original pressure exerted on the head wall will be K b times P b and K b is computed as 1 minus sin phi divided by 1 plus sin phi and here phi equal to 35 degrees. So, we will get the value of k b equal to 0.271 and if you multiply that value with this vertical pressure P b then you will get 0.271 into 1000 into 0.75 which has come from here. Okay. So, we will get 203.25 kg per meter square. So, this is my horizontal pressure which has been 
transfer to the backfill material because of the water level that is equal to 0.75 meter okay, and that is exerted on the head wall. Okay. Now, this is clear. Now, we will go to our next problem. So, this is another typical problem. In a drop spillway, the height of backfill material above the upfront is 2.8 meter. You can see from this figure, the height of backfill material is given as 2.8 meter, that is equal to y. The tail water depth is 1.05 meter. You can see from this figure, the tail water depth is given as 1.05 meter above the upfront. The angle of internal friction of the backfill material is 12 degrees. So, that means for the backfill material phi equal to 12 degree. Under no flow condition, what is the resultant horizontal pressure exerted on the head wall? Specific weight of backfill is 1050 kg per meter cube. So, it is telling under no flow condition. So, no flow means there is no water here, there is no water above the crest. So, it is just like a dry soil. Okay. So, no water pressure is there from the head water. Okay. So, that will be equal to 0. So, here what you have to do? You have to ca calculate what is the resultant horizontal pressure. So, the resultant pressure there are two horizontal pressures, one is acting in the positive direction because of the backfill material and another is acting in the reverse way because of this tail water, because this is your tail water of 1.05 and the resultant will be the upstream water pressure, horizontal water pressure minus the downstream water pressure. Okay. So, with this concept, we will now solve the problem. So, from this figure you can see y is given as 2.8 meter that is the height of the backfill, t is the tail water depth that is equal to 1.05 meter, phi is given as 12 degree that is the angle of internal uh, friction of this backfill material and the specific weight of backfill is given as gamma b that equal to 1050 kg per meter cube. So, similarly we can calculate what is our horizontal pressure due to backfill, the vertical pressure will be equal to the weight of this backfill material for a height of 2.8 meter okay, and that you can compute as gamma b into y and if you multiply with the factor k b then that will be converted into the horizontal pressure. Okay. So, our vertical pressure is gamma b into y. So, this vertical pressure into the k b that is equal to 1 minus sin phi divided by 1 plus sin phi. So, that will be equal to your horizontal pressure. Okay. So, your phi is equal to 12 degree. So, it will be 1 minus sin 12, 12 degree divided by 1 plus sin 12 degree into gamma b equal to 1050 and 2.8 is the uh, height of the backfill. Okay. So, by multiplication you will get 1928.64 kg per meter square. So, that is the upstream water pressure uh, sorry upstream pressure because of the backfill material. Okay. Now, you have to compute what is the horizontal pressure due to tail water which is having a depth of 1.05 meter which is acting the opposite direction. Okay. So, for that simple formula we know that is equal to gamma w into t the height of water depth. So, gamma w you know that is equal to 1000 kg per meter cube into 1.05. So, we will get 1050 kg per meter square. So, the resultant horizontal pressure will be P b minus P w. So, that is equal to 1928.64 minus 1050 kg per meter square. So, we will get 878.64 kg per meter square which is acting on this head wall in this direction. Okay. Now, we will go for our next problem, problem number 5. In a drop spillway, the depths of water above the crest, moist backfill and submerged backfill are 0.5 meter, 1.45 meter and 1.75 meter 
respectively. So, you can see the figure the depth of water depth is given as 0.5 meter that is given by h. Okay. Then the depth of moist backfill that is given by y 1 that equal 1.45 meter and y 2 which is submerged that equal 1.75 meter. If you remember uh, in our previous classes we have studied for different type of drainage condition like type A and type B type of drainage condition. So, there is saturation line here okay, and here there is a filter. So, because this saturation line you will get this area this backfill uh, this backfill material is submerged okay. and because of because your saturation line is here. So, this soil will be naturally moist and the specific weight of this moist backfill is given as 2000 kg per meter cube and the submerged backfill is given as 1050 kg per meter cube and you know the specific weight of water is 1000 kg per meter cube. Okay. Then question that what is the total vertical pressure exerted on the foundation material due to the water and backfill material. So, simply you have to calculate what is the vertical pressure. So, vertical pressure is equal to gamma into h. Okay. So, the total vertical pressure will be equal to the vertical pressure due to this water, the vertical pressure because of the moist backfill having depth of 1.45 meter and the vertical pressure because of the submerged backfill. So, all these three components will be added. Okay. Now, with this concept we will solve our problem. So, vertical pressure due to water is 1000 to 0.5, so that equal to 500 kg per meter square. Vertical pressure due to moist backfill will be equal to 2000 is your gamma m into 1.45 is the depth. So, we will get 2900 kg per meter square. Vertical pressure due to submerged backfill, so gamma s equal to 1050 into 1.75 is the depth y2. So, we will get 1837.5. Okay. So, once these three forces, three pressures are computed, now we can add these three. So, we are getting 5237.5 kg per meter square. So, this is the total vertical pressure which is exerted on this foundation material. Okay. So, this is simple problem. Now, we will solve another problem. From the illustrated figure for a drop spillway, estimate the horizontal water pressure due to the submerged foundation metal above the plane of sliding. So, you know what is the plane of sliding? The plane of sliding is along this line. Okay. So, along this line you have to estimate that estimate the horizontal water pressure. You can see estimate the horizontal water pressure due to the submerged foundation. So, in the submerged foundation that means this is your submerged foundation and the depth is here y 3 equal to 1.6 meter. So, very simple the water pressure will be equal to gamma w into y 3. Okay. So, that will be equal to 1000 is your gamma w 1000 kg per meter cube is the specific weight of water and height equal 1.6 meter. So, that equal to 1600 kg per meter square. So, this is the horizontal water pressure because of the water which is inside this foundation material. Okay. Now, we will solve another typical problem. In a drop spillway with 4.5 meter square base area and 1 meter base width, the estimated resultant moment the estimated resultant moment means it is restoring moment minus some of the restoring moment minus some of the turning moment. So, that is given as 17143 kg meter and the vertical resultant vertical force is 6843.2 kg. So, sigma v is given. Okay. So, it is asked what is the eccentricity for the structure. You will see this right hand side figure the eccentricity is computed as this d is given as 4.5 because this is 4.5 divided by 1 meter. So, we will get d equal to 4.5 meter okay. and d by 2 where the centroid through the centroid line 
will be equal to 4.5 divided by 2. Okay. So, this is our d by 2 and this is your drop spillway, this is the head wall and this is the plane of sliding okay, and this is the contact surface. Okay. So, we have, take, we have taken origin here and our line of our reference axis is at the downstream edge, you can see this is our reference axis. Okay. So, from this all these moments are calculated and the vertical force B is acting here because the head wall is this side. So, naturally the vertical forces will be acting little bit or nearer to the head wall from the centroid. So, this distance is E. So, we have to estimate what is the value of eccentricity E. So, from this figure you can see E is equal to Z minus D by 2. Okay. So, from this figure you can see D equal to Z by 2 because this is my Z value. Okay. So, we can calculate what is our eccentricity. So, first step is since we know this D value equal to 4.5. So, we have to estimate what is my value of Z. Okay. So, to estimate the value of Z, we know that Z equal to sigma m divided by sigma v. So, sigma m is the resultant moment that is given as 17143 kg meter and sigma v is the resultant vertical force that is given as 6843.2. So, we will divide you will get 2.505 meter and d equal to 4.5 meter. So, we will get d by 2 equal to 2.5. 250 meter. You can see from here that Z is greater than d by 2. Since Z is greater than d by 2, which is uh, in this case in this figure, you can see this value is larger like 2.505 and d by 2 equal to 2.25. So, this is my d by 2. Okay. So, if you will make it minus e equal to z minus d by 2. So, we will get 2.505 minus 2.250. So, we will get 0 0.255 meter. So, the eccentricity is 2.255 meter. Then our next problem on the weighted creep distance. So, in this figure uh, you have to estimate what is the weighted creep distance. The figure is given and all the dimensions are also mentioned in this figure. So, you know that weighted creep distance is equal to sum of all the horizontal for, uh, horizontal distances at the contact surface or along the line of piping failure plus one third of sorry it is the sum of all the vertical uh, distances plus one third of the distances which are horizontal. Okay, or flat in nature. So, in this case first you have to identify what are your vertical distances. So, you can see here the vertical distances are A B then C D E F and G H and these values are 1.4 meter all are 1.4 meter. So, you will get the sum of all these vertical distances that equal to a b plus c d plus e a plus g h all are, all are equal to 1.4 plus 1.4 plus 1.4 plus 1.4 all are same. So, we will get 5.6 meter. Then the horizontal distances, the horizontal distances are here b c then f g then this 4.3 that equal to d okay, and also this distance. So, that is your h i. So, b c equal to 0.35, d equal to 4.3, f g equal to 0.35 and h i equal to 0.5 meter. Okay. So, we have to take one third weight of these horizontal distances. Then you will get the total length of this horizontal distance equal to 5.5 divided by 3. So, we will get 1.833 plus 5.6 you will get 7.433 meter. So, the weighted creep distance equal to 7.433 meter. Okay. So, this solves our problem. 
Our next problem is if the weighted creep ratio of the foundation metal of a drop below is 5 meter. So, the C w value that is your weighted creep ratio is given as 5. Find out the weighted creep distance for 3 meter differential head. So, the 3 meter differential head means it is the differential head between the tail water and the upstream water. Okay. And we know the formula the weighted creep ratio is given as weighted creep distance along the foundation material divided by differential water head. So, we will get weighted creep distance that is equal to C w times differential water head h and C w is given as 5 and differential water head as 3 meters. So, we will get 15 meters. So, the weighted creep distance is 15 meter. It is a very simple question. Now, problem number 10. In a drop spillway, if horizontal contact distance along the foundation is 4.5 meter and vertical contact distance is 6 meter, what is the weighted creep ratio for 1.5 meter differential head between head water and tail water? So, this is a similar problem. The horizontal contact distance is given as 4.5. So, for calculating the weight, you have to take one third of that distance. Okay. Then vertical contact distance is 6 meter. So, you have to take as such 6 meter. Okay, then, what is the weighted creep ratio for 1.5 differential head? So, h is here 1.5 meter differential head. Okay. So, if the table value of the weighted creep ratio for the foundation metal is 4, is the structure safe against piping failure? So, the given value the foundation metal value is given as 4 C w value. You know that if your structure or computed value of C w is greater than the table, table value, then the structure is safe against piping failure. So, if we can compute, if you will compute that C w value which is greater than 4, then you can see that you can say that the structure is safe against piping failure. Okay. So, the solution is uh, given here C w can be estimated as sigma L v, L v is the sum of all the vertical distances which is 6 meter given and L h is the horizontal or flat contact distance which is 4.5 meter, it would take one third of this weight. So, one third of this weight that is equal to 6 plus 1.3 into 4.5. So, we will be getting 6 plus 1.5. Okay. So, that is equal to 7.5 and this divided by h. So, here h is given as 1.5 the differential rate. Okay. So, we will get 7.5 divided by 1.5 that is equal to 5. So, the estimated value is 5, C w is 5 and there is, this is greater than the table value. The table value is given as 4, you can say this is 4 not 5. So, since the computed C w is greater than 4, so the structure is stable against piping. Okay. Now, we will solve the next problem. So, this is problem 11. The coefficient of friction in the foundation material of a drop spill is 0.21. So, coefficient of friction mu is given and the cohesion resistance along the area plane of sliding 7200 kg. So, that is equal to C A. If you remember what you have studied, so it is 7200 kg is equal to C A. The resultant vertical force on the foundation along the plane of sliding is 6000 kg. So, sigma V here equal to 6000 kg. So, what is the horizontal force? which is resisting slide. So, you have to compute what is the value of R h. You can see from this equation, you have to compute what is the value of R h. Mu is given that is equal to 0.21, sigma v that is given as 6000 kg and C a the already computed. So, it is given as 7200 kg. So, you will get the horizontal force resisting slide equal to coefficient of friction times resultant vertical force plus cohesion resistance for the total area from this equation. So, we will put the value of mu that equal to 0.21 into 6000 plus 7200 you will get 8460 kg and this is the horizontal force which is resisting slide. It is acting along the plane of sliding in the opposite direction and that is balancing the horizontal force 
on the head wall, okay, which is acting above this plane of sliding. Okay. So, this completes our the gate type of questions, the solution to different gate type of questions. Okay. So, uh, we will uh, stop here and this is the end of our lectures for the eighth week and uh, similar type of gate problems also we can solve and you can go through these uh, whatever the assignments are given and the assignments are similar to your also gate type of questions and uh, uh, this will I think uh, clear your knowledge or the fundamentals on the design of drop spillway. So, thank you very much.